Hello friends, dear viewers, closest and bosoms both home and abroad. Assalamu alaikum. My heartiest holy Ramadan al Mubarak greeting to all of you, those who are reaching and staying far and close in Bangladesh during COVID-19 situation. And for most of my Facebook live today, I convey my heartfelt gratitude to Almighty Allah who has created us and still keep us alive and happy and healthy during that global pandemic COVID-19. Who has created us and who will be the just in the just mental day. You know, based on the community talks, the Facebook page, community talks, YouTube channel, community social workers network, these all are affiliated to community social work practice and development foundation. By the grace of almighty, actually, I dream to found that foundation because of upbringing social work in a professional stage in Bangladesh, having a close connection of the friends, followers, volunteers, philanthropists, and well-being hearted people, both in home and abroad. Still, we are doing so, and in that Ramadan, and the COVID-19, we are st staying at home, we are stuck. That's why we, we make an episode initially, day before yesterday, and yesterday we have had an episode on domestic violence, you know, our grand title of that Facebook Live is Stay Home, Stay Healthy During COVID-19. This is, of course, a great community social work concern. We are very delighted to have our honorable three guests yesterday from India and Bangladesh. They had a wonderful discussion last day. Today, we are very honored to host our first Asian episode. This is completely global episode and the whole episode will be in English. Hope you all will be with us and you must put your comments to get connected, to be connected with our discussion. You must like our page, put comments on this, subscribe YouTube channel so that you could be connected further for our next videos and abuse and all kinds of activities that we really extend. We are very happy to have our three honorable guests today from India, from Nepal, and from Philippines. We are very happy sir, to have you here today. Our honorable guest from three countries of Asia, Mr. Manoj Kumar Sharkar from West Bengal, India. Dada, most welcome to you to our Facebook live show today based on Good community. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And you can see our honorable guest, Pradipta, Ms. Pradipta Kadambari from Nepal. I will introduce you again with detail. And Dr. Nikamil Sankes from Philippine. Dr. Nikamil, your microphone is mute. So could you please just unmute your microphone so that we can interact each other? Namaste. Uh, good afternoon. From the film. Good, good afternoon on behalf of all Bangladeshi people, on behalf of me, my volunteers, my whole team, and the students of Bangladesh and the social worker and the affected people of COVID-19. Our wholehearted greetings to all the people here in Bangladesh and Nepal, India, Philippines. Those greetings, of course, go to all the people, those who are in a suffering situation due during this COVID, unwanted, unexpected global pandemic that is you know already declared globally this is a human disaster this is a financial disaster this is a moral disaster this is a mental and psychological disaster globally it's happening so you our honorable guest we are very honored from that platform i extend heartiest felicitation and gratitude to all of three of you to be connected and expand and extend some time for our followers and friends this is a sharing platform. You know, I have founded a community talks YouTube connected with 
Community Social Worker Practice and Development Foundation in Bangladesh. Me personally, Abibur Rahman is a social work faculty and a practitioner. I like to be oriented as a practitioner rather than a faculty because I know if there is not a good connection between, between academics and the practice field, social work can never be extended and social work can never be identified as a profession in in particular some Asian countries. It's still far behind to get the recognition of a profession, though it's supposed to be a great profession, tremendous profession situation like COVID. So dear followers, dear audience and our friends, those who are with us from home and abroad from different countries, hope you will put your comments, you will be with us, you will interact with us putting comments and uh, you all please share on your timeline the link that already sent and I will send you again in Messenger so that more our friends could be connected. So let us start our session today. I would I, I, I like to recall the session. Our grand title of this session is Stay Home, Stay Healthy. Though there is a global slogan, stay safe, stay home, but we would like to say stay home, stay healthy is very typical and top in this situation, in such dark situation, so many things are relevant on this. And there is an extra appendix is, this is a great community concern, especially today's session is dedicated to, the main focus of today's session is rebuilding process of community during post-disaster situation. So hopefully there is so many areas might be included during disaster and after disaster. So I would like to join with Mr. Manoj Kumar Sharkar. I know you are of course in West Bengal, a great personality in development areas. You are a lead consultant. You are the founder of a development professionals, West Bengal, and you have a long profile Actually, it's very difficult for me to, uh, to, to summarize it here. So, Monozda, could you please uh, brief us in what areas you're standing, your support, and what situation is going on in West Bengal, in particular, Kolkata and other surrounding areas? I would welcome you to our show. Monozda, please. Uh, thank you, Habibur Bhai. Uh, good afternoon, Pradeepta, and uh, uh, good afternoon, Nikmail. Uh, it's uh, nice to be with you at this. Uh, webinar um yes uh, uh, all of us across the globe are <clears throat> passing through a unprecedented situation which is uh, we never had expected and uh, the outbreak of the coronavirus has uh, created such a situation is <clears throat> it's not limited within a particular group of community but it's uh, spread across all sections of the community and we are uh, everybody is at uh, the crisis of um, being uh, affected by this virus. Uh, so far as right. uh, India is concerned, uh, the number of cases has crossed over 90,000, which is very alarming in terms of the, uh, the number of days that's uh, um, done every day. The number of cases are getting, uh, I mean, is increasing day by day. So far as uh, your studies data, it's, it's, 50, it's uh, uh, around 54,000 people are directly affected by this uh, virus. So this, you can understand the kind of spread it's taking place if you compare with the situation when it was first detected uh, early in the March and uh, after uh, almost two months, it's the situation has the scale of the, um, the spread has increased to a um, lot. So at this time of crisis, everywhere in India, um, the worst affected are those who are basically living in the rural areas, uh, in the slums, in the squatter colonies, and those who are into the streets. You can see right. the lots of um, and millions of uh, migrant workers are working on streets to go back to their home, and they are not having any kind of support at times of their crisis, not having food, uh, adequate water, and all these things. And quite a lot of them have survived their life on the streets. So it is, it is a very uh, painful situation when you see people are starving in the communities. And I can refer you to four cases. 
but i have seen a, yeah. a lady in the in the sundarbans which is uh, the remotest part of uh, which is a cross border between india and bangladesh uh, i can see a lady whose two sons are working in tamil nadu and uh, she couldn't uh, get anything to eat and then she collected some aram leaves and boiled it and ate it so that is the situation there in the rural areas so it is not um, uh, expected that people should serve you like this <clears throat> and at this time of crisis it is our everybody's role i think as a social worker as a development professional all of us should think on a, on the process of how we can rebuild the communities overcome all this um, pandemic situation and cover up this um, crisis so this is right. how uh, i think i think we should think in a different way and because see uh, quite a um, large amount of people and some substantial number of people have lost their existing livelihoods lot of uh, people are um, still trying to <coughs> i mean uh, arrange for their daily food for their uh, families a uh, lot of families are not having to uh, twice a meal a day so these are the basic challenges and i am really um, uh, very um, i mean it's really um, hurts me when i see people are walking on the streets uh, with their children and children are lying on the their suitcases or uh, on their uh, shoulders and they are and um, they are not having food not having drinking water so these are the realities the ground realities and even after all those two um, measures by the government are uh, still um, not having all these facilities at their doorstep and this is how the situation they, across india it's not only limited <coughs> to west bengal it's across india and particularly the rural areas is worst affected and another part is the elderly people those who cannot move right. those who have no one to take care and there are another section who uh, are uh, uh, i mean equally uh, affected with this situation are the uh, persons with disabilities because Thank they you. cannot move yeah. yeah they cannot move they cannot um, go anywhere and they cannot access the um, the uh, this public distribution system from the government so you can understand how these people are uh, surviving in their day to day life at this time of crisis so for the introduction i think it's it's a it's a quite a, yeah. a lot of thing i have given for discussion so let's start the discussion and listen to others thank, thank you. you thank you thank you mr monas kumar sharkar for a wonderful introduction already so many of our friends putting comments there with us and i, I i'm just coming back dr shukti prabha from india uh, mr pratiki basu ivan nc pratiki uh, banshidhar professor banshidhar pande Yeah, Rahman, and our so so many of our friends are coming. So I'd like to join and request Miss Pradipta Kadambari. She is Honorable Principal Kadambari Memorial College, Honorable Senator, Purbanchal University, Nepal Senate. So I would like to request you just to introduce yourself through an introduction on that topic. Really, during COVID nine situation, nineteen situation, how we are at our family. we are supposed to be happy but not happy what's the reason within a brief short in introduction because we have so many discussions that already monos the mention thank you thank you welcome to ms pradipta pradipta so i would like to request you just to introduce yourself somewhere uh sorry thank you thank you professor rahman uh, good morning and namaste to everyone from nepal uh as the tag line said by uh, professor rahman is stay home stay healthy he also added one whether we are happy or not uh, i feel stay home is our dream place so i feel still home is a place where we can be healthy and we can be happy also so in this uh, aspect um, i will uh, i like to welcome everyone in this platform which is uh, one of a new normals that we are going to have in a uh, probably one year two year or much more longer time uh, i'm a social work educator and uh, as a, i lead a college kadambari memorial college the second social work <coughs> college in nepal and as a uh, my perspective here is in rebuilding uh, communities is 
as said earlier, there are lots of uh, vulnerable people, vulnerable uh, communities that as a social worker we work for and we prepare our students to work for. But uh, this um, disaster, this public health disaster is different than other disasters like earthquake, uh, floods, where we are uh, different than the surviving people or affected people. Here we are also a part of effect and we are also um, a practitioners to mitigate that effect or ad address that effect. So in that case, I really feel that uh, there are a lot of things changing. And as an uh, educator or institution, we have a, a bigger responsibility to find out new approaches, some old ones, find the uh, more local right. knowledges, uh, wisdom, so that the rebuilding process of the community can be more effective and it's not be more uh, self harm, it's not be more unhappy. So I, I'm enthusiastic. I'm enthusiastic because the shift from globalization is going to a localization. And the uh, South Asian countries, uh, including Nepal, we are very rich in community resources. So we have to again re explore those resources and probably. Um, bringing, uh, we have to bring that aspect of resourcefulness and community than looking community as a deficit. So this is my opening, uh, uh, oh, 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 this opening, and it's not a statement, little the saying. So yeah, this is, this is what I'm thinking and we are also planning to work as an institution at present to or, uh, all right, a... all right. Thank you, thank you, Miss Pradipta. Already, Rio Washima from Japan. Japan. She joined us. Dr. Arjun Shinha, Shakti Prabha, Alamin. So many friends. Rabon Ostu. They are uh, having few few questions. So we're coming back to you soon. I would like to request and invite Dr. Nikamil from Philippines. He is honorable technocrat. He is a researcher. He is a very, very promising social worker. He has a key focus on mental health during the overall uh, starting to till today and the post-COVID situation to support mental health support to the Filipino people. And online, they are supporting, so far I could follow, they are supporting the global friends in mental crisis. So in our inception time, I'd like to request you, Dr. Nikamil, we're very honored to have you here. I know you are very, very busy like other two guests today. So could you please introduce us initially how we can be happy by your words? Thank you. Hi, uh, Namaste. Uh, greetings from the Philippines. I am a registered social worker, also a researcher and a technocrat. I have my own startup company, which uses information technology. Uh, this pandemic is a shared experience of the entire humanity, whether we are rich or poor, will be affected. Uh, secondly is, as we mentioned, the most vulnerable are, are the poor, uh, the destitute, and we have commonalities between Nepal, India, and the Philippines that uh, in this pandemic, the most affected are those who have been left behind. Uh, thirdly, is it's a challenge for our for our uh, profession as a social worker. This pandemic have significantly changed the way we will provide our social work intervention. And uh, as as our guest mentioned, uh, it's now high time for us to to build on our uh, indigenous model and indigenous practices using technology uh, to be able to be more relevant in addressing the, the needs of our, 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 our countrymen. And uh, in this pandemic, uh, the social worker is in the front line, we as social workers and uh, uh, the, the, the mental and social resilience of our country will be dependent uh will be mostly dependent on how we will provide efficient and effective social work intervention 
Thank you. Thank you, dear guests and honorable and respected friends, those who are following, actually during this COVID-19 situation, we the people generally love to stay at home because we are very busy in work, in profession, in job, in business, so many places we are engaged. We have hardly found time to spend for the kids, for the uh, household activities, for parents, uh, household chores. That is very tough time actually we pass all through, but this time COVID-19, we are supposed to be happy staying at home. But when we do a survey, when you talk to friends, colleagues, and other, other people, professionals, nobody actually from her, they can produce smile, they can produce symptom of happiness. They say, okay, it's, things are all right, but actually uh, we cannot spend time happily. We are not well at, at all because COVID, coronavirus is such a germ, is, is such an enemy which cannot be seen, but which brings us a great danger. Actually, uh, this makes people untouched. This makes people physically distant. Actually, we are the human being. We love to stay together. We love to stay close. We love to mm -hmm. hug people, handshake people. But this time, this coronavirus stopped all these things. And, you know, my friend, World Health Organization already declared this is a global pandemic. Uh, this is a disaster of human civilization. This is a disaster of health, economy, agriculture, uh, industry, airlines industry, in so many areas already it brings us disaster and the, all the global leaders already declared and surrendered officially and unofficially that we cannot fight against COVID. So there is a term of spirituality. There is a term of religious belief and faith of all religious people, of all people, really. There is a sense of equalization. There is a sense of equal distribution. There is a sense of harmony. There is a sense of empathy and sympathy. Actually, all these terms is, uh, are, are brought together in front line, really. So in, the, in that space, I would like to convey my, on behalf of you our gratitude to all the doctors and nurses of all the countries globally those who are frontliners, all the social workers, all the development activists, all, all the government officers who are on duty to distribute uh, uh, the government incentive and supports and services to the affected people. And the uh, lower class people, actually, those who are mentioned and categorized in that way in different social media, those who are involved in agriculture, in small, small business. So there are so many areas that actually in the in his first piece, uh, uh, Mr. Manoj Kumar Sharkar mentioned after this COVID-19 situation, 19 situation, there must be needed a rebuilding community process. This is a must. Everywhere we are in a buzz of concern and worry about this, that after this situation, everything will be in a danger to have a question of restructuring or reconstruction. So. I would like to come to uh, Monosda, really, Monos Kumar Sharkar, as a mm. lead consultant professional, a, a, a top consultant in West Bengal and global, and also, of course, in the all parts of India. Actually, how could you uh, make us some guidance that already a point, one question raised, specific to reduce mental crisis staying at home? This is the first and foremost part of our discussion that mental crisis reduction or remove, how can be it possible at home during this COVID, uh, irrespective of all people, because these people has different type of agony and, and torture in mind, and the people those suffering for food only, they have different problem, right? The street bigger, they have different problems. So your time is three minutes, sir, or four minutes okay. maximum. How could we extend your voice to the people, those who are already connected, uh, to stay home and stay healthy. Thank yes, you. Uh, I, I can see there's a query from uh, uh, Choiti Dash uh, asking about why the cases are increasing in West Bengal uh, even after 60 days of lockdown. See, uh, the point is lockdown right. is not, not lockdown is a measure to reduce the number of cases, but lockdown is not an um, prevent. I mean, it's not a medicine. 
uh, it's, right. it's only a measure to uh, reduce uh, reduce the number of uh, affected so this is uh, it cannot be compared with like if the lockdown is increased to 90 days the number of cases will decrease it is not that it was just a step to uh, keep people uh, keep people away at their home and um, uh, be with the family members so that the number of cases can be reduced and the pandemic uh, situation can be controlled in a better way now i'm coming to a point of men mental health issue it's the uh, it's the call of the hour because after having been in the, at home for last two months uh, it's a very difficult situation for different uh, levels and different i mean um, i mean segment of people those who are uh, at the uh, um, uh, i mean um, from the elite class families they have a different uh, level of mental health issues it is not they are uh, having a crisis of uh, finances they are having difficult circumstances because they are uh, into different kind of businesses their kind of activities which they are restricted now so that has caused some sort of uh, i mean uh, fatigueness some sort of uh, disappointment among them whether they will be able to revive those work whether they will be overcome this situation and come uh, go back to their work regularly so that is a kind of um, situation coming in for the people in the urban areas and particularly for those adolescents those who are off from their educational institutions see educational institution is not only for studies but it also helps the children to mingle with each other and share their day to day life experiences uh, share their stories and all this thing so they have a different kind of problem and if you go to the uh, suburban areas or the uh, the rural areas they have a different kind of struggle because see there the level of violence is different uh, in the rural and suburban areas because the number of family members are uh, compare, uh, comparatively uh, more in the rural areas and to feed them at, uh, every day at this time of crisis is a challenge for the head of the family and in that case right. there are a lot of lot of issues coming up which that uh, the head of the family is unable to overcome and as a result there are uh, situations where violence uh, family domestic violence there are uh, issues of um, uh, abuse exploitation and even child marriages are taking place human trafficking is happening so, so these are the challenges uh, coming up and mental health is the major concern because people uh, not um, uh, only um, the adolescent but the youth even the adults they are not all are able to overcome or cope up with this lockdown situation so in in this situ uh, current context what i feel is there has to be some mechanism uh, from the government and from our development sector um, uh, professionals uh, those who are into the uh, ngos or into uh, other um, sectors of this kind of activities they should uh, initiate a process of providing Uh, adequate counseling support to th these people because the counseling is one of uh, the process through which their tensions <laughs> their um, uh, i mean fatigueness their disappointments can be reduced. so this is how we can uh, address um, uh, the local situation of uh, handling the uh, crisis and also uh, Mm, i feel that those organizations are into the field of um, uh, in the working in the rural areas or with the urban slums or with the street dwellers they should uh, have some mechanism of uh, interaction by keeping the social distance mechanism alive uh, maintaining all those norms that has government uh, imposed so those things has to be followed but even after that there should be a mechanism for interaction with these community people so that they can overcome all these trauma a lot of trauma is working among these people they cannot uh, uh, um, i mean um, open up uh, there is there has to be someone to listen to them they need a window to um, ventilate actually so this is my opinion in uh, in the way of uh, understanding uh, uh, and overcoming the mental health issue okay all right thank you thank you wonderful discussion actually we have so many more discussions waiting gradually we'll just move on so yeah. there is one specific question also with greetings to dr nikamel ivanensi 
She asked a question just to know from you. Please, Dr. Nikamil sir, tell us some simple ways to keep us mentally strong at home to operate family as a single woman. So as a single woman in that type of situation, most probably she loves to mention her burden is double or more than that if she has a child. So how could you explain, sir, please? Yes, uh, please in the Philippine setting, uh, it's true that uh, the most uh, affected uh, individuals or groups are the single women who are taking care of their, their kids or their children. Uh, first is uh, you need to continue connecting with your family. Second is uh, you could connect with professionals like registered social workers in the Philippines too or psychological first aid. So our volunteer uh, registered social workers in the Philippines have initiated a humanitarian endeavor, which we provide psychological first aid and psychosocial support uh, to individuals who need it. So they could link to us and we will actively listen and we will link them to appropriate organization and services to address their basic needs. Uh, at the end of the day, is one common values of Asian, like Indian, Nepalese, or Bangladeshi, and the Filipino is uh, we have a strong family system, and we care for each other. So continue linking with your family. Just to add, really, is uh, we may say that uh, there are many people who have been left behind by cash transfers and 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 uh, relief uh, assistance uh, because in the Philippines uh, the data shows is uh, there is around more than in my analysis on the data uh, we have more than 100 million uh, population and the registered uh, poverty per household is around 22 percent and the recipient of the cash transfer is around uh, 17 million. So you, you may expect that more than 5 million uh, have not received a necessary or important <coughs> emergency cash transfer. And most of them may include single women. And uh, this simple tips is connect with your family, connect with your friends through, through social media and through Facebook. Through, to tell us and connect with professionals. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I would like to come to uh, Dr. Nikamil. Thanks a lot. I would like to come to Ms. Pradipta. Actually, we are sharing about India, about Philippines, some part of Bangladesh, and I would like to come to Nepal. The mental crisis, actually, this is the baseline. This is the comprehensive crisis, which is connected to economy, which is connected to agriculture, education, transport, and all the things that are, of course, uh, laid on a uh, mental health crisis. So in Nepal, as you are off, you are taking class from uh, home, right? Doing office yeah. from home. So how you are supporting your students, your family members, your relatives, neighbors, and the closest one known person in mental health support that, that Dr. Nikamil mentioned, that uh, Mr. Manoj Kumar Shalkar already mentioned. Actually, our focus just now for a few moments is mental health crisis, so it's, it will be discussed again and again based on the pattern of questions. So please share in, uh, how it's going on in Nepal. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, though uh, family is our favorite place, sometimes uh, staying in one place, lockdown is, uh, is, is, is uh, uh, causes to create a mental um, health crisis. And we in Nepal also, the, in last month, the number of suicidal cases have increased a lot. So this shows that uh, the crisis is going on. As you said, uh, especially the professionals, we started working from home, and uh, there are lots of schools. It's uh, Nepal's now uh, the academic in, in the school uh, time. It is the semester break, and it's the start of the new station. So many of the schools have started uh, having online classes in urban areas. 
and uh, being a mother and also a professional i can see the changes in my son's <coughs> routine, routine they are now into their school routine and that also is very helpful it's very helpful to give you some mission some you give you some things to really work and it's it's it's, it's we call in psychosocial support we call it externalization of interest so this is really um, doing than thinking is very important. And as um, I said earlier, the, it's very important to connect not only with, with the family. We have a strong family system in our South Asia. It's, uh, may it be from phone links, may it be from social media, stay uh, connected. But, Thank but you. Same, Thank but at the same yeah. time, it is also important to connect with your peers, your friends, because there are many issues, many things that you can't share with your family members, but you can share with your best friends. So this is also very important. So the friends who are uh, maybe listening to a different uh, uh, things that they are not expected should be very welcoming, not be judgmental. So they can give them a good uh, ventilation uh, spaces. So that what I see now is a way to manage the mental health crisis. Uh, all right, all right. Thank you. Uh, In that case, yeah, yeah. Have a yes, please. Can I can I can I just add one more point? Like, uh, yeah, of, of no, course, of course. Uh, yeah, as Ma'am said, uh, this online uh, schooling system, the online education process which has also been initiated in India. But uh, if I uh, tell you, um, in India, uh, there are only about 8 to 10% uh, children who have internet access or having smartphones. So that access to online education is also um, uh, another um, I mean, challenge for them. And that is also creating an, another um, trauma for them that some of them are able to access and majority of them cannot access. That's also creating a trauma for them. We, we are uh, um, and, uh, remain be behind and we cannot learn. We are out of the show. So this also is another issue where uh, we also, uh, as uh, social workers, as professional uh, persons, we also need to look into across Asia, if we can uh, think of an Asian model of how we can uh, um, come up with an uh, Asian model of uh, providing online education yeah. because see this is this is a big challenge big so far challenge, as the uh, Asian, yeah. Asian countries are concerned see people uh, uh, almost uh, all the countries uh, poverty is a big issue for all uh, all our Asian countries right. and in right. in under this uh, situation if we expect that a, a daily wage earner a family person, yeah would uh, arrange for a smartphone and will recharge on a regular basis for accessing internet level classes. So that is a very luxury for that uh, uh, family. And we have to come out with some, some sort of solutions of how we can organize uh, some uh, community level, small uh, group classes with keeping the social distances on this. And maybe some, uh, some, some sort of shift uh, uh, based classes or maybe uh, classes through home visits by the teachers or the, uh, um, the exactly. assistance to the teachers. So we have to come out with a plan. So um, I think, uh, see, there are a, a number of members in this group. I, I would uh, uh, request all of them to suggest if they have any idea about how we can mm -hmm. uh, come up with a newer model. Because see, this uh, coronavirus is not going to uh, go away from uh, all of us. It, it, it will remain with us. So anyway, right. we have to survive with this and we have to provide uh, education. We have to continue all other functions and everything. So in innovatively, we have to think of how best we can serve the children, their interests, their education. So this is my um, uh, I mean, request to all other speakers. So if they have any ideas, if they can also share their things. Yeah, can I can I share something? On this? Yeah. Yes, yes please. Yes, please. Yes, please. So I, I was coming uh, to this point. Like there is, there will be a disparity in have and have not with the online classes. And Nepal government, the Ministry of Education's um, 
announced and directed saying that online classes are not a formal education and nobody actually they asked to stop it so my version is different like you said one side doesn't fit for all this is the emergency situation uh, we have a different community different uh, resources geographically uh, economically resource wise and i've been like we, sh we should be thinking our government or the policy maker or educators should be thinking that uh, the communities they are also resourceful they can also create and innovate their ways so i have been in uh, in touch with the rural uh, um, part of nepal and they're using fm radios fm radios to keep their uh, learning going on uh, there is another one um, schools it's in in a mountain region and they said that they don't have outsiders coming to their places so still uh, it, it's a, they they are doing like uh, the, the, the class like earlier so there are different models so this is a challenging uh, time but when we give them like how you come out bring your own model so that we can facilitate that model probably they will bring out with what is doable in their situation uh, yes. All, all right. Thank you. In that Thank case, you. I would like to greet our honorable followers, our respected friends are here. Ear Rahman. Nice, sir. Thank you, Ear Rahman. Ivan NC, Ear Rahman, Ivan Banshidhar from India. Dada, good. Good initiative. Prokriti Bashu, very alarming situation for Via for COVID-19. It's really alarming for the uh, for us globally. Eva and C, please sir, explain us different ways to keep us healthy in lockdown situation. Eva, thank you. Already it's uh, uh, done, and also we will be in discussion more on that part. Pratik again like, uh, wrote here, extremely pathetic and painful condition, especially for the poor people. Yeah, we will come to discuss we're keeping focus on the poor people, especially those who are in seasonal work. Shakti, Dr. Shakti Prabhupada from India, uh, uh, good afternoon, Arjun Shin, Shinha, everybody, good afternoon to all of you, Ria Washima from Japan, Stabani Ostru, Alamin, Rahan Anjum Tanha, Joyantu Kumar Ghosh, very good, Joyantu Choiti Dash uh, has uh, written here, in spite of almost 60 days of lockdown already, uh, Manas da has described on this, Amy. Uh, Macaraig from Philippines. Good afternoon from Philippines. Ivan NC uh, asked Dr. Nikamil. Dr. Nikamil already described that part. And Alamin, MD Alamin, BNCC. Middle class families, families who are infected with the virus, how can we give them financial support? How should we think about them? My ask for ma'am and sir. Okay, Alamin, we are coming soon to you. And Shadad Saim. Assalamu alaikum. How much do you think the economic impact for COVID-19 could be in Europe and South Asia? Actually, uh, he loved to um, uh, learn from us and listen from us the comparison of e economic Im impact both in Europe and Asia. What should be the volume and significance uh, or the range of difference? Shujun Banerjee, my question to academicians. This is a vital question. So already we are in the footstep to that discussion. Do we have to focus more on developing those models which reflects indigenization of social work practice or still we have follow those Western models in social work practice which often fail to understand the roots of our problems? Shujan Banerjee, you are in the right track. Already our honorable guests are in the right track. We will be on uh, that part of discussion in depth, hopefully, because this is the main concern. If if we could develop our own model based on contemporary issues of Asian context, then hopefully we, we shouldn't borrow some models from Western countries, their context and our context is different. So it's a very vital question. Amy from uh, Philippine Road, do you have any other platforms or learning mechanisms, systems, as far as social practice or field practice, senior social work, social work for students in your countries, Nepal, Bangladesh, and uh, is concerned. Okay, from Nepal, Pradipta will share, and from Bangladesh, I will share about students' internship practice field and exchange program, how we can share each other. Actually, this platform is for that one, for serving that purpose, because you might see guests from different parts of Asia in next episode, 
then from Africa, from Europe, from America, North America. So guests will be invited soon. Gradually, and even from India, Philippines, and Nepal, again, guests will be invited. Actually, my motto with some of my colleagues and volunteers to make a global platform for exchanging our current situation of social work, what's going on and how we can improve. Because social work has no border. Social workers shouldn't have any border, really, in kinds of sharing and caring. So, Imi, we are coming soon. And Vashwati uh, Shekhar, uh, it's a very good discussion in this situation. Yes, please be with us. And for my students, my beloved one and Bangladeshi followers, Ami uh, Bulte Chai, Community Talks BD, a platform open Kurache, Jita Shabar Junne Jukto Har Shujugate, Abushui Banglai, Komen Likun, Shigulu Amra English, a convert Kuramad Shamanito speaker Jara Chenta de Kanek Kurbo among Jarakun Dikchen, Tara Komen Kura Jukto Hon, Tara Facebook, a share then Community Talks. Abar Bulshi Community Talks YouTube channel subscribe for Amade Protector issue Shamach Kormuki Kibabe. Manushir Dunudin Jibone Shate Prujone Shate Shamosha Shate Jukto Koraja professional background Tiki Shita Yamade Prochesta. We are coming back again to our honorable speaker. I would like to share and say again this platform is actually uh, has a motive to bring social work in front line to ensure all kinds of social service to what solving community based problem person to the community with a group. So we are in such a stage. This question, we will discuss it the last part, how we can professionalize through all these things. But matter is COVID-19, this is an uncertain situation. But there are so many situations, unwanted situation and crisis around the world. So my two specific areas, one is in three or four countries, Bangladesh, Nepal, Philippine and India, uh, more or less, we are based on agricultural economy, agriculture and small industry. In this time, our government has declared a huge amount, considerable amount incentive for the agricultural sector and the small industry sector, other business sector, government sector. So if I come back to uh, Mr. Manus, uh, Manusta, could you please explain as an development professionals, how uh, the situation of agricultural economy can get back because without agricultural revibration, it's very difficult to get back community rebuilding process. So could you please share yes. the agony, the situation and the post COVID situation of agricultural yes. um, worker? If you have, uh, yeah, uh, if you have seen um, during last uh, um, week, uh, the government of India has come up with um, a huge uh, uh, economic reform package covering all sectors, not only agriculture, but all sectors, uh, starting from agriculture to small scale industry, to other businesses and middle, uh, middle level agencies, MSME, the uh, middle and um, small scale industries. So these are the areas where the government is trying to put on uh, resources and providing uh, low interest uh, loans, which I, uh, I think uh, maybe are a source of uh, helping people to recover uh, from the situation. But it uh, there are issues uh, related to agriculture because agriculture is the base. Uh, um, if we see our Asian countries, agriculture is one of the core areas of uh, uh, our uh, largest number of people involved in uh, for their livelihoods. So in that case, agriculture uh, can be considered, uh, should be considered as uh, the core for all other production uh, included across so because there are allied industries which are dependent on agriculture and in that case agriculture should be given uh, a, a, i mean uh, extreme priority uh, and also it is important to uh, know that how uh, these uh, farmers who are into um, uh, agriculture who are into um, there are vegetable uh, um, uh, growers and they are into small scale industries because they are uh, doing some byproducts out of the agricultural product they can be brought under one platform so giving loan is cannot be a solution in one way because uh, already they are suffering from uh, a crisis and now if they go for a further loan they will have more bondage 
to overcome those situations so i don't think giving a loan cannot be a solution rather we have to find out how their products can be more circulated uh, among uh, the communities among the people so that they can sell it off and uh, all these products can be uh, i mean based across the local shops then only they are uh, they will be able to overcome their financial crises it's not about that giving them loan to overcome the situation but they will have to repay the loan even after 3 years also so it is creating another burden for these uh, farmers so i don't think giving a loan would be an uh, 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 solution oh, to uh, think the connection is a problem it's actually yeah uh, yeah during this time huge internet crisis because okay. users number increasing more and more daily so he hope he will come back again uh, could i come into uh, dr nikamil yes. then uh actually yes. that uh, yes just to uh, that i love to ask mr monos i'm just asking you is that in social work there is a process actually revitalization or resource mobilization inner resource mobilization that monosta was telling loan might not recover the people from their hunger and agony right from their disastrous situation how can we how can we revive small small industries productions vegetables right agricultural products and make people uh, yes. marketing this all goods right please yes uh, the context here is every government especially in southeast asia or in asian government a uh, provision of cash transfer will be the short term intervention and uh we really need to think about uh, the issue of self sufficiency in terms of our agricultural production the social workers have a bigger responsibility in in uh engaging with our farmers in preparing them to a new normal and uh in advocating policies that will promote self sufficiency second is the issue of uh connectivity uh in in, in the internet uh it's just like i would like to compare it in social distancing so only people right. who have the mean uh could have uh, could could do social distancing in their homes the question here is how about the people living in slums and informal settlements so uh, social workers also have a greater responsibility in advocating that uh advocating for uh growth efficacy uh and altruism within this context and uh at present uh we really need to have this foresight uh how our profession can maximize uh, and maximize the utilization of information communication technology uh in, to to better provide uh social welfare intervention so uh uh for for us let's see it in a context in our own community in our own country the 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 important uh, contribution of our social workers not only in 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 fighting covid but also in looking at the long term solution because as we all know in our own community in our own country as uh, as we all know this is not a sprint this is a marathon and in a marathon the hardest part are in the middle and the last part and okay dr nikamil dr nikamil i have just additional question to you globally that we could see british association of social worker australian association of social worker ifsw national association of social work america they have separate separate ethical standards and steps and measures really to fight against covid they are serving beside the government beside some other voluntary organizations but due to uh, already one question raised here due to a professional platform strong platform in the countries like even in bangladesh india sub parts of india though india is getting better in terms of professional background nepal but so far i know philippines is better than us philippines has a strong basis of 
professional social work, you have certification process. But in this regard, in COVID-19, this challenge, beside government and some other voluntary organizations, how social worker is standing beside the poor people, beside the root and street people and the agricultural people. Actually, just sharing your experience that's going yeah, on in the uh, Philippines. I'm also a member of the Australian Association of Social Worker. Right, I see. Of the British Association of Social mm -hmm. Workers. So in my own experience, the comparison here is they have a very active uh, professional groups that lobby, uh, that contributes in lobbying the protect for the protection of uh, the most vulnerable and for the protection of the social work profession. In the context of the Philippines is, the main challenge in the Philippines is Right. Hussain, uh, Baki, they mute Kure, the Hussain. Yeah. Uh, okay, carry on, please. The challenge in the Philippines is the one or the people heading the Department of Social Welfare and Development are non social workers. Usually they are retired military officers. So it's very difficult uh, for them to understand the whole context of the social work profession. So that's our, one of our main challenges. Second is, uh, in terms of our challenge in our in our academic system is until now we don't have a PhD program in social work in the Philippines. So if you see that if you log behind with research, you cannot <coughs> develop knowledge, skills, and attitude. So that's a challenge not only in the Philippines but in all Asian countries. And we usually use Western concepts, theories. To guide our local mm -hmm. social work uh, provision, I think that's the main challenge that we need to think about. And uh, lastly, is we need to have a strong professional organizations that will lobby, uh, that will have a strong lobbying capacity to push for social work or social worker protection in this time of COVID. Right. <clears throat> the challenge in the Philippines right now is we have got already report, confirmed reports that uh, mo some of our social workers have had COVID-19 because of the fulfillment of their duties in the hospital or in the communities providing cash transfers and relief assistance. So uh, that's the, the context here in the Philippines. Very good. Very good, Dr. Nikamil. So far, I could understand you, you most probably love to share all social worker works department is led by retired army professionals there. That's why they are hardly understanding the right thing to do in right places. Actually, the situation is going on everywhere so far now in Bangladesh. We are facing such crisis in medical social work area. I mean, the hospital, people are rec being recruited from different other disciplines. Actually, I don't ignore them, but problem is, Social worker cannot be motivated. Social worker cannot be spaced and properly placed to serve these people properly. And I'm coming back to Madam again and also Monusta. But uh, before them, there are so many, uh, uh, so many queries and greetings here. Vishwati Shorkar, it's a very good discussion in this situation, and she also wrote how village people cope with this problem because they live in a very congested area and not so much literature. Uh, uh, Manusta, I'm coming back to you. Before uh, you, I'll ask Madam uh, Pradipta. And Arundo Jebakon, uh, he wrote he wrote here, nice to see international scholars and social workers. We are highly grateful to, to all of you for your time and sharing experiences. Shami Mohammed, uh, Habib Rahman, sir, I like a lot of you. Uh, Visa Mahan. Visa Mah Mahazan, hello from India. Naga Raju, one of our friends. First, I must thanks to all of you. Value time spending here for social workers, professionals, other public of global level. Really appreciate to Habib Kadambari, Madam, and other professors. Dr. Shakti Profa, uh, she raised a question, nice question. Actually, she deals with children education. Kindly share opinion on mental state, state status of parents of children who are waiting for their exams. Very vital question for our young champs, young generations. Chandrima Sharkar, this discussion is so relevant at this 
catastrophic situation on uh, Raihan Anjum Tanha, uh, Salam Jani, but I would like to ask uh, Ms. Kadambari, as you are closely, directly related to education of children, you are facing so many queries and questions from your students and the guardians even, even policy level interventions and phone calls as a senator of Purbanchal University and principal of Kadambari Memorial College, you have so many responsibilities uh, relating to education. So how you face this crisis, could you please explain how parents can become and can console their children during this COVID-19 catastrophic situation, please? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, there are lots of uh, courses or the um, classes which uh, are worried the which are having their final exam in, in Nepal. Uh, grade 10 exam is considered as a very important exam. We call it SEE exam, school um, label um, exam. And that has been postponed one day earlier uh, before the exam begins. So that has created a lot of anxiety and the tensions among people. It's not only because they couldn't appear. There are few, uh, there are lots of uh, students who travel a miles to get into the um, exam centers. So this is one thing. Another is the university level uh, examinations, the early exam of the um, classes. Uh, looking at the situation, since uh, the education phases are also the, the, are different, so their importance, their emerge, their um, needs to be happening at the earliest diff is different too. As being uh, educator in higher uh, education level, I see that we usually have uh, a time frame of three to four years in bachelor's programs. And even in master's, we have two years. So this is the time to be more open to the education system. So I'm also discussing with my colleagues in what if we postpone the semester exam and do it once in the end of the year. The importance is uh, conducting or carrying out uh, the education process. And uh, for other um, schools labels, uh, parents and uh, students, this is the emergency situation and we can't really uh, really uh, realize that we, we can't really demand or we can't really expect that they, this would be happen, the exams would be happening in next uh, month or very soon. And there is a fear of loss of academic year. But I don't see that uh, fear to be more, um, uh, it, it's very important at this stage, at this stage, this is the importance is to be a survivor and be prepared for the next normal that we are now uh, talking about and we are planning. Because all right, all right. yeah. So so this is the we have to be more realistic, <laughs> realize the situation because the examinations would happen and uh, if it's going to happen in one year. I don't think that will really matter a lot. One year in a whole life, like we have a life expectancy of uh, 60 plus or 70. So one year. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, it's a very small time from our life. So greetings from our friend Sukpi came from South Korea. Honorable President, Daegu Association of Senior Citizen, and UN representative of IFSW, Mr. Sukpi came has greeted all of us from South Korea. And he wrote me, please, Habib, convey my greets to all. Visa Mohan wrote, good deliberations. Thing is, I'm 100% aligned with Ms. Kadambari's talk that one year time is not a big deal from our life. Time is just to survive this time, you know. I would like to share some comments and quotations from Jack Ma, Alibaba Foundation CEO, he wrote a few days back, during this COVID time this year, 2020, please don't think for your benefits and profits of your business. If you can survive only in 2020, just think 
If you can alive, that would be the benefit and the profit of 2020. Actually, it's a, it's a nice, nice quotation from him. And, you know, from uh, Nagarazu, our friend from India also greeted us all uh, and simultaneously with Sukhim. So Kim, thank Being you. alive at this time is the We are very honored, the Kim, you joined with us. And actually, Kim was our inaugural guest. Yeah. So Kim will come again. Kim, hope to see you again. And our greetings to all of you in your family and your nursing home and your association, Kim. That I'm saying here, you know, some spirituality, some matters delivered by Bill Gates and some renowned leaders and scholars globally, many presidents and prime ministers, of course, with respect to their almighty and creator, surrendered that we are helpless now by COVID-19. So do something spiritually. And Bill Gates wrote in article several times that we are, we are just learning something from that COVID-19 spiritual development, right thinking level development mutual harmony development so many things are coming on so i'd like to come to mr mona Sharkar. actually due to a network problem you were you, you were disconnected so please continue yeah. on your point yeah. and yeah. i i just add one thing in rural people poor people i mean those who are closely re related to agricultural economy which is a very vital questions country like bangladesh india Nepal and some parts of Philippines. So how could you realize their situation and how could we revive them really in post-COVID situation? Mr. Monoshalka, please. Yeah, uh, sorry, uh, my, uh, I was uh, disconnected uh, out of the network situation. Uh, what I was uh, trying to tell was uh, to come up with an integrated uh, model of addressing the community needs. See, this is uh, very important to understand he, uh, it's not only uh, livelihood, not only education, but there are multiple issues we need to address, starting from livelihood, then public health, then issues of children, issues of adolescents, then uh, uh, issues of uh, violence uh, and uh, issues of um, other social integration processes. So these things are to be uh, taken into under one umbrella in an integrated manner so that we can uh, not only, uh, for example, if we ensure only livelihood, <coughs> the other issues will remain be unaddressed. So we have to think in a very integrated uh, uh, way how we can uh, do it in a proper manner. And in that case, what I feel that whosoever is trying to uh, uh, go for a uh, community rebuilding process, there has to be an initial the rapid assessment of uh, the respective communities of how people are at, uh, at, at this moment and what are the crisis, what are the situation they are facing in their respective communities in terms of their change in livelihood uh, situation, change in uh, their um, uh, sociocultural uh, um, situation, change in their, um, uh, I mean, present uh, situation of the children, because children are not going to the school, they are staying back, home, back at home. And there are a uh, lot of uh, uh, situations happening where children are bec becoming the victims of those situations. Actually, internet is a big issue now. During COVID-19, internet crisis is a big crisis. All our internet user nowadays, just to get to be connected with friends and relatives and family members, it's a big concern. So uh, let, let him come back. No worry, let him come back. Again, we, we will reconnect him. So Dr. Nikamil, one vital yes. questions. Yeah, one vital question was there. You have experiences from Australia. You have global experiences of social work practice and academics. Arena, so indigenization of social work, which is a big question. So how we can promote this in Asian subcontinent and which might help us to 
be alive as a social worker with a proper identity, with an entrance, with honor to the community people for service. So could you please explain that matter? Yes, uh, you, if you will observe, most of the social work books, theories, concepts, and models have been written by Western scholars. And uh, we could adopt the, the best practices or the best theories, and we could try it out here in our own countries, in our own local conditions. But the main challenge here is for us to develop our, our own indigenous practice, indigenous models that would address or that will be relevant given our local conditions. So uh, we all know that in India, Nepal, Bangladesh, and the Philippines, we have a rich culture, <coughs> tradition, and history that we, that we could use as a foundation in building this, our social work, uh, or amplifying our social work practice. Second, uh, the public perception uh, on social worker of uh, being there just to provide the necessary uh, relief or dole outs. Uh, we need to we need to have this paradigm shape where social work can provide not only uh, immediate relief assistance or our dole outs, but a social worker can are, are providing holistic approach and in this time of COVID it's very important that uh, we see this pandemic not only as a big challenge for our profession or for the whole humanity but also uh, an opportunity for us to rethink and remodel or even uh, uh, amplify our, our social work contribution that's all for me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm coming back. There are a few more questions. I should create them. Maruf Hussain, Rahan Anjum Tanha, Kim, Riza Mohan, Shakti Prova. Great. Thank you, ma'am. Shakti, Dr. Shakti Prova. Great to Miss Kadambari. Nagarazu, he is our very close friend Shujan Banerjee just wrote nicely one quotation Shujan thank you he is a very very uh, uh, prom promising social work scholar being a social sc uh, scholar of social work I can feel the problems of students community very closely students are facing a lot of issues in this pandemic situation the time has come to understand the importance and rule of school social workers we have to work more on school social work concept which can bring parents students and teacher under yes. single umbrella to deal with various psycho social issues of students and naga raju habibji many thanks to you thank you naga uh, uh, my friend uh, heartfully because you are gathering different parts of world social work professionals Today's session is very good and wonderful. A lot of information sharing here. Kadambari, Madam Sukhvi, Kim, others become. Others are very powerful. Guests had global network experience. Just one thing I'd like to share with Shujan Banerjee before come to Ms. Kadambari. Uh, thing is school social work. As social work in Indian subcontinent still, uh, somebody thinking like voluntary job, th somebody thinking it's a charity, though these all are very closely related to social work, but professional social work is a bit different, you know, and we are aware about that. But matter is, we cannot identify where should you start. School social work already, I would like to convey you my sharing is uh, from my foundation already, we have started initial stage of school social work project in Bangladesh. This is a voluntary project started by me, by my volunteer group. But we hope so, hopefully, inshallah, by the grace of Almighty, by our efforts, uh, very, very soon, we will do something to make a triangular shape among the parents, the children, and the teachers by the external support of social work counselor and social worker, though still 
we don't have any recognition. We are just striving and fighting to get the rec recognition. So, Ms. Kadamburi, how could you explain how students can be connected with us, how we can strengthen our platform, social work platform globally, so that we can you know, be united and be strengthful in practice? What is your comments on that? Yeah, it's, it, this is very important. This is very important uh, path. And still, it's open to uh, open for actors to bring it ahead, especially in South Asia, where social work profession is still in the process of recognition. I'll also link this to indigenizing social work that um, the question was ahead, uh, earlier. We have Western models, and I see the benefit of both. The right. Western, uh, Western models are very good in documenting their practices, researching them, and then bringing them as a resources in academics. We are still behind. The COVID-19 situation has also already recognized our indigenous practice <coughs> of social distancing, doing namastes, and all, no? So this is, the, but we have never uh, documented it. The social scientists have never uh, documented it. Probably this is uh, the time for us, the scholars, the upcoming st the students and upcoming professionals to do a research and then bring it as a model or theory. So I'm very enthusiastic now. Uh, there is going to be a new theories of community social work now because there will be more explorations of going underneath our social norms, social practices, practices and etc. This, this is already there and we see them as right. a study. So we have to reconstruct them. And in this space, really, we have to work. Yeah, we have to work together, the students, because COVID nineteen situation is as new as it is for our students. We are on the same page. And, Thank you. Uh, yeah. So uh, my idea one is how we can. This this is a very good um, uh, opportunity, and we have come out with this kind of learning platform. If it were earlier, it would never going to happen. And it's working quite well. We've been learning. So this kind of students consortium of the South Asia, so that within the student level, they can discuss their own um, times. No? And then probably right. I, it could, I see this as a pyramid. And in uh, psychosocial support intervention, which is the basic needs, and then the communities, and all the, then the space like That's what I see in the South Asia, the students are underneath will be gathering lots of data and working and then the another um, a pyramid, another section of uh, maybe the institutions and then probably the, uh, the um, what we call that consortium or social uh, councils. This. So if we come out with this kind of uh, model, then uh, we, we can really contribute to social work. And probably with this contribution, we can uh, be more efficient. We can have more backdrop or, so, or evidences or all our effectiveness to establish ourselves as a recognized profession. So I am very positive. I'm very positive. Very good. Very good. Just two comments. Uh, Baranita Dashgupta Chakraborty said, great work. Visa Mohan Raj. Indigenous in social work and holistic social work are key issues. Actually, these are the key issues. And one thing I would like to add before coming to Monozda, Monozda, please. Uh, uh, never mind. Actually, it's internet problem everywhere, right? So no worry. Sorry, I, no? I, yeah, there's some internet <laughs> problem. Uh, yeah, so I'm repeatedly getting disconnected. I'm sorry. No for problem. That. Uh, we are. So, so I'm coming back to you, Dada. I'm coming back to you. We are social <laughs> worker. We are very positive. The many times you will be disconnected, yes. we'll reconnect you. Right? No worry. <laughs> certainly, certainly. <laughs> but so, thing is, uh, I would like to add, add some comments. Put some comments with uh, Miss uh, Kadambari. This thing is, COVID nineteen. So far, initial stage of COVID nineteen, we were treating this as as a curse. Still, this is a curse. This is a great pandemic, this is a curse, but thing is, it brings a great lesson for the social worker even, because uh, COVID-19 has multi-dimensional impacts and effects towards the society and 
holistic social work, comprehensive social work, general social work. Actually, we have so many, so many branches, so many options to work together. So we, we could, uh, that Kodambari told here, actually, we have so many options and le lessons from that COVID-19. Uh, or from those areas we can contribute and uh, just look into and put our efforts. So I'm coming back to Mr. Manoj Sharkar, but adding our points with your previous discussions. Rural people are said to be, uh, most of the cases, uh, not literate, not aware. But question is, COVID-19 situation, COVID-19 numbers, positive affected people number is increasing. Lockdown is getting relaxed day by day some, somewhere, right? But people are advised to keep uh, physical distance, health, healthy measures uh, for reviving our agricultural economy. Actually, we need the people to work together, right? Otherwise, it's very difficult. So at the same time, in such a coincident situation, how you could advise us here as something for those people who are suffering in rural areas and different parts of India and Bangladesh even? You know? extend and another thing just, just another thing as a development lead professionals you have so many works but in COVID time when government in different areas where there is no specific statistics on agriculture uh, based worker day labor rickshaw polar in like in my country in Dhaka city when uh, we are trying to give them support give them financial help give them uh, logistics support foods as there is no statistics, we are in a big problem. So do you believe COVID is teaching us to strengthen our national statistics for facing next disaster? What do you tell to that on that part? Hello, am I, I'm, I'm audible? Yes, am I please. audible? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Yeah. So what I was uh, uh, referring earlier, like uh, to have a uh, rapid assessment of the communities, that is the primary thing we have to complete first to understand the current scenario of the communities in terms of the loss of livelihoods, the change in the livelihood pattern, and the change in the uh, inter uh, social cultural aspects of the daily life of the community people. It's not that they are continuing with the same same life uh, styles. Because this, during these two months of lockdown, there have been a uh, lot of changes in their food habits, their um, family situations, and uh, uh, addressing uh, the other issues. Because there are no social, I mean, uh, social mingling among uh, all the community people. They are not uh, uh, reaching to each other. Only at uh, times of uh, going to the market, some of them are going to the market and uh, for purchasing day-to-day -day, uh, needs. But it is not uh, the re I mean regular process that we used to follow earlier. So in that case, there have been a lot of uh, mental health issues as Ma'am was referring. And uh, uh, the other issue Ma'am was referring was very important. We have to understand how children are there how they are coping up with the changing scenario of the uh, the schools are not um, operating some of them are having access to uh, platforms to uh, have education majority of them do not have the access to have education so those things are to be assessed primarily before we go into an integrated model because each community or each uh, um, uh, social uh, uh, i mean socio uh, geographical areas will have specific problems to be addressed. So in that case, those issues are to be identified primarily uh, before going into any plan. And giving relief cannot be a solution because this is a stopgap arrangement. Like people, those who are starving, relief uh, uh, giving them dry ration or some uh, uh, nutrition supplements can be a, a, a one-time solution, but that can cannot be a continuous solution. There has to be a mechanism where we'll have to find out ways how we can best integrate these people with the existing services of the government. Because government has all mechanisms in place. We'll have to make a bridge between the government mechanism and the communities so that these community people can have access to those services. Similarly, for the public health issues, that is one of the major and most important area which uh, people should understand key. it's not about uh, staying uh, home. It's keeping themselves safe from all other hazards because 
it is uh, uh, it, the virus is to uh, it's not very uh, i mean cannot be uh, it's not visible and it, uh, uh, it can be transmitted in uh, at any point of time so how to keep yourself away from all the hazards how to uh, build your own immunity to combat all this situation and the other way is to keep the children safe from all these hazards because children are more vulnerable and also the um, people the elderly people they are equally vulnerable in terms of being affected with corona so this has to be taken care into and all these things are to be assessed initially before getting into any uh, program implementation or program designing unless you have an assessment of the situation how people are there in the community it is very difficult or it would not be uh, logical to plan out any uh, program if we plan out for uh, say community development how do we plan what are the basis on which ground you are planning for this what are the strategies you have to uh, you have to plan it out your strategies on how to address those situation because the livelihood pattern will certainly change in this current context similarly if you see those who are into daily wage earning process they will lose their job because those who are into agriculture nowadays they have engaged their own children into agricultural work so if they find that this this way they can save some money they will not further include those uh, laborers so where do those laborers go where do they earn from right. so those things are to be assessed then we we'll have to plan out that how best see social entrepreneurship is to be promoted that is one of the uh, i mean uh, one of the call of the hour that social entrepreneurship can resolve all these issues there are a lot of skills in the communities there are a lot of uh, uh, resources in the communities we'll have to tag these people into those resources and find out different other forms of livelihood options compared with the existing pattern there are immense opportunities in the communities we we'll have to prepare the community we we'll have to make them understand that the existing livelihood pattern is not the ultimate there are other ways of earning and make them um, i mean we have to build their skills to cope up with those uh, circumstances so that they can earn in a better way in not in the form of uh, being a daily wage earner they can come up with a group of people may form a self help group and then can um, earn from uh, um, in that way so these are the things we'll have to plan out based on the existing scenario mm-hmm. uh, and for that we have to make an assessment of what where is the community at this point of time not all the communities have similar kind of problem some communities have some sort of problems and there are people people with uh, 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 persons with the dibble, uh, they have a uh, kind of problem and persons who are elderly they have a kind of problem persons who are, who have been uh, uh, working in other states who have come back as migrant laborers where they will go they will they will not want to come uh, go back to their workplace at this moment of time so how they will survive uh, mr monos sarkar monos mm-hmm. i have an additional input with you and question with you there is Thank a comment you. from dr shakti prova social entrepreneurship is very much needed actually this is a yes. comment and it's true yes. but ma- uh, what i would like to add you in covid 9 situation actually that we taught our students crisis intervention during this covid time emotional first aid like something we have to provide if we could provide them that would be a great deal but matter is during this time all the community level small small producer i mean the agricultural producer goods producer and the consumer and the big big businessman uh they have not com- been communicating properly because because of lockdown situation because of lockdown situation so there is a bus question in nowadays that community level enterprise that already dr shakti prabha mentioned the community level or a small enterprise social enterprise should be developed but what is your suggestions how we can make an alliance between small small community level ent- entrepreneurship or entrepreneur and the Uh, 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 and the consumer i mean uh, those who are involved in business big business yes. business yes 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 
So uh, recently, I had been to an uh, one national level uh, this thing uh, consultation on uh, developing social entrepreneurship, and what I found is across India there are a uh, uh, lot of people who are coming up with very uh, interesting ideas, and they have started doing it uh, in their own way, uh, and they have uh, they are uh, I mean basically uh, making a lot of profit, and they have employed another four five people in their entrepreneurship. So those ideas, I have such ideas. I can help them out if someone is interested. I can always help them out in uh, doing such entrepreneurship. So I have several models with me. So that is, uh, see, there there has to be a uh, system and the mechanism of building a bridge between the consumer and the producers. So this entrepreneurship group, they can uh, see. Uh, if, so far as uh, if you see uh, this national livelihood mission. Uh, here in india <coughs> uh, uh, or in west bengal the, the anandadhara scheme if you see there are a uh, um, um, lot of um, self help groups more than 3 lakh self help groups are there in west bengal yeah. yes yeah miss yeah, no, kadambur would you like to add something yes please yeah, 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 yeah. 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 if he has finished yeah. So it, it's like uh, we also um, uh, re realizing the importance of social entrepreneurship for social workers. So we have recently, it's been only four years, uh, added a course in Bachelor of Social Work in Social Entrepreneurship. Uh, and this is very Great. important as it's the bridging between the consumers and the producers. So one thing I just like to I, I uh, like to add, and while we're talking about the community. Uh, rebuilding. Uh, I, I have come across. Uh, I, have, I have come across uh, artist and social activist Ricardo Levis Mora, who has reconstructed our a very common saying of giving a fish and teaching how to fish. So I like to just read that one. Probably I I feel this is relevant here. He says, uh, "If you give me a fish, you have paid me for a day." <coughs> If you teach me to fish, then you have paid me uh, until the river is contaminated or the shoreline ceased for development. But if you teach me to organize, then whatever the challenge, I can join together with my peers, and we will fashion our own solution. So I right. think this is what social workers should be doing in the community yes. and yes. within themselves also, because they also have to reorganize themselves and also yes. create. Yeah. I do. I do agree. I do agree with uh, Pradeepa, ma'am. Um, it is. It is the call of the world. Let we have to make them understand how to do an entrepreneurship. It's yeah. not that we'll we'll just feed them out. It's the process that will make them understand, and they will carry it out. They will develop themselves. We'll just facilitate them to grow up with uh, the entrepreneurship model. See, getting into entrepreneurship is itself is a challenge. Because people uh, mostly are very uh, comfortable in getting into jobs, uh, particularly into government jobs or any other jobs. But if we uh, ask them to do something for uh, by himself or herself, that becomes a challenge for him or her in taking up the challenge. So taking up challenge is the big issue. If someone is ready to take up the challenge at this point of time, he or she can flourish out. we can just facilitate them when uh, then to come up with uh, the several models i have and uh, i think ma'am you also have some models so we can all uh, i think uh, habib sir habib uh, bhai we can we can Monos, always help them yeah yeah mm. monos the monos the just mm. just one thing one thing mm. we have to we think have to for the time <laughs> we will yes, end yes. it yeah I'm after about the, the time and for our audience i would like to convey a message that next 30 minutes we are remaining with them so please if there is any voice or any questions or any queries or any comments put put it right now one very very pragmatic question raised from sukpikem our friend from south korea i would like to know the situation on vulnerable elderly in each country how they cope and what kind of policy is adopted so everyone will get just 2 minutes i would like to start from dr nikamel so what sort of serving and nursing system care caring system is there for elderly people in philippines uh first uh you need to categorize first is 
older persons, Filipino elderly living in the community and Filipino living in residential centers and older persons or seniors living in rural and urban areas. The United Registered Social Workers have this advocacy on promoting the welfare, especially of older persons living in residential centers because most of our residential centers are managed by, by the government. So we're quite, uh, uh, we're, we're advocating special protection for them. And secondly is older persons living in rural and urban communities, uh, especially those elderly without pension. So they are the most vulnerable in, in, this, in this COVID scenario. And thirdly <coughs> is we really need, need to take care of our elderly uh, as a country and as, as one family and as one nation because uh, they are the most vulnerable uh, uh, individuals or group in COVID-19. So uh, we have different policies, but at the end of the day, and based on my PhD research, they're currently isolated right now because majority of the elderly are not, are have problem in internet connectivity or doesn't know how to use technology. So their main activities is to go out and socially interact person in person to person, but it really change the way how they will interact and this COVID pandemic uh, has been have added vulnerability to, to, to our elderly and uh, we really need to ensure that uh, they are they are protected at the same time they are still valued or we see themselves as have an important contribution in in, in the fight <coughs> against COVID-19 uh, as I said they are the ones who could provide necessary education in their own homes to their grandchildren so just one good example of uh, how we could involve older persons in the fight against COVID-19. Thank you. Dr. Nikamil, one additional question with additional time, 90 seconds for you. That is, Fajana Bobby raised a question. She is faculty. I worry about educational impact as well as the long-term impact to the to my students' well-being. What can we do in this situation? Just uh, actually, she uh, loves to console her student by your suggestion. What do you feel? How she can console for students' well-being? And another, uh, uh, Shujon Banerji uh, greeted us all. Just let me read out that. Uh, comments thanks habibur rahman sir for making such a great platform i follow rudipta kadambari ma'am on facebook she is a fantastic person and we wind up teaching she is also engaged with various social work activities there our respected nikamil sir manoj sir manoj also explaining breathing beautifully and during the session uh, actually shujan Banerjee, thanks a lot because uh, so far we could understand you are very up, up upcoming promising social worker we will later in last part of this session discuss we are social worker we are social leader we are promising leader but why we're staying back that would be the last question on behalf of me and also for me even we'll discuss it later so uh, uh, dr nikamil please could you look into the matter that farjana bobby asked you uh, first, as I see it, it's uh, both short term and long term. In a short term uh, uh, engagement with our students' emotional well-being, first we need to realize that all of us will this COVID nineteen will have a significant effect on our well-being uh, for our students, uh, especially social work students. Uh, in the Philippines, we our volunteer registered social workers have initiated a provision of free uh, online and telephone psychological first aid. So, uh, because uh, we need to, we all need to adapt to this new normal. And uh, in a long term perspective, we need to look at the issue of connectivity, because there are studies that will tell us that. A uh, purely online educational based system or delivery have a have a significant difference compared to 
uh, compared to one-on-one -on -one or personal engagement. And so we need to come up with a more uh, relevant model that will provide, uh, that will address the local educational uh, gaps. First is we need to look at the issue of connectivity and access to this ICT resources. Second is we really need to ensure that our social work models, our curriculum, will will be relevant to this new normal, because as we as 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 we all know, COVID nineteen will be with us, not not just for one year, but we don't know five years or even more than that. So we really need to make some adjustment on our social work models and and teaching. And uh, lastly, is uh, we really need to support the well-being, not only of our students, but also uh, the well-being of our country. Because as I see it, uh, we could recover uh, our economic losses. Second is, we could bring back the health of our country. Uh, if you will not give importance to the social and psychological resilience of our people, it will have a long-term effect. And it will and it will affect both economic and 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 health of our of our country and our people. So social workers have an important role, especially in ensuring or promoting psychological and social resilience of our country. That's all for you. Thank you. Very good, Dr. Nikamil. Thanks a lot. Yes, please. I'm coming yeah. to uh, uh, Miss yeah. Kadambari. Just time is two minutes. Or if yeah. you really need more, 10 seconds plus, please, on that. <laughs> no. So uh, from these two minutes, uh, I'd like to just uh, take a few minutes to the, the question, but, because this is also very relevant and very uh, associated with us as an educator. Being but, very... but but before that, pardon me, before that, there was a question from Supreme of yeah. elderly yeah. policy, right? So yes, please. Yes, yes, OK. So elderly, in terms of elderly policies, especially in this emergency response, I'm not aware of any policy that is focused to this uh, special group in Nepal because Nepal mm -hmm. is still in the still in the early stage of uh, the, the transmission. So, um, but I have seen the vulnerability of the people in terms of, uh, of being elderly, and then the need of the medical care and assistance and also having a disability, the mobility restriction. Uh, so the needs, it's uh, very important. And uh, at this, uh, to my knowledge, at this moment, I have not seen any special policy uh, in this uh, emergency situation for the elderly or elderly people. So now I'm going back to the, the students' uh, concern. Uh, usually, the feel of loss, loss of academic year, loss of uh, um, education, the student feel is what really uh, making them anxious or having negative psychological effect. What if as an educator, we bring that, we ship that loss to the gain? So, uh, if our academic uh, sessions uh, just go, uh, just pushed a uh, little uh, ahead, we can still engage them in the training, workshops, just a talk, even working in and logging into uh, understanding and knowing online um, classrooms is also a gain. So, uh, my uh, advice. And my always say to my students is book and our academic courses as not only where we can only get knowledge. So we can gain knowledge from this situation and other aspects. So we have to give that sense of gain than, uh, rather than a sense of loss to our students. Thank you. This is very good. Very good. So let's come to uh, Mr. Manoj Sharkar. Manojda, could you hear me? Yes, 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 I can. Uh, before coming you, there is a comment. Let me uh, take part with her from Philippines. Thank you so much for all of you sharing. This is a good venue. And before that, Supikim, thank you. And both 
just uh, here greeted thanks both of you this is a good venue for all of us both social work educators and practitioners sharing our own experiences in respective countries in the pand pandemic Sukhpi Kim wrote, thank you, Professor Kadambari. And again, Imi wrote, this is a worldwide concern for all the colleges and universities. A new learning mechanism system shall be developed in a new normal situation to address the needs of the 21st century. Actually, she comments it nicely. Very good. Manojda, please explain the question of Sukhpi Kim. Uh, which one? Uh... Elderly, elderly policy and elderly and, care. And, and, and elderly yeah. policy, okay. yes. Uh, see, uh, in India, um, so far as uh, the government of India and uh, in uh, government of West Bengal uh, is concerned, they have made um, the public distribution system free for uh, almost all people, so that they can have um, their action at home and they can um, survive at least. But uh, so far as uh, elderly people uh, in the in terms of their access to general health care, that is uh, in a stake because most of the hospitals are uh, focusing on uh, treating the COVID-19 patient. So in that case, the general patients, particularly the elderly and the children also, they are not having a uh, common access to health care services, which is very important particularly for the elderly, because some of them are going through dialysis, some of them have some other kind of health issues and all. So that is that issue needs to be taken care of, which is not appropriate to be taken care. And uh, most of them are suffering uh, um, from having uh, not having uh, access to appropriate medicines. The supply of medicines in the shops, the chemist shops, that is not also available. Some of them are really struggling to get it from uh, the suppliers. So these are the challenges. One way there is a facility for uh, ration and uh, dry ration and all, but other way the uh, issues of health is a concern which is which needs to be taken care of uh, appropriately here in India. Uh, this is uh, all about uh, uh, the uh, situation of elderly in India. And uh, can I just add one point? Uh, yes, please carry on. Yes, sir. Yeah, the, the point is, uh, uh, so far as uh, the current scenario, we are uh, having uh, one uh, rapid assessment across West Bengal of all the districts to understand the situation of children and their families in terms of access to their basic needs, access to education, access to health, uh, and the kind of immunization, uh, and also in terms of the child's present engagement whether the child is uh, associated with education or the child has got into some work or um, the parents get into work because the family has lost their existing um, uh, livelihood things. So this is how uh, uh, we are trying to understand the situation from the ground and uh, probably by next 15 to 20 days time, we'll have some data uh, with us to uh, uh, across West Bengal to understand. Is this similar process can be taken up at this point of time in other parts, uh, um, in, in other countries also, to understand the scenario of the community, in, particularly for the children, the adolescents, the families, and the elderly. And accordingly, some plans can be uh, developed to address this issue in an integrated manner, not in uh, compartmental or in specific verticals. But there has to be a very comprehensive plan to address all the issues together so that all sectors, all uh, age, age group people can be addressed together under one umbrella. Thank you. Great. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. But there, there is a vital question. We are close to the end and conclusion of the session. This is, of course, wonderful session. So many friends mentioned um, to to reach the apex of social work professionalization. Of course, we have to come together. We have to reach together. We have to forget the boundary of the country in that global era. We have to share more to care about each of us, really. And in this COVID time, uh, there are so many teachings and learnings for us. Sukhpi Kim, my friend, you were still with us. We are very honored. And Kim greeted 
to Manos Sharkar, Manos the Sukhmi Kim has created here. Thank, thank you. So that I'm sharing actually uh, this platform, though I'm not a, a, a senior or renowned social worker, but I have a dream because I do believe social worker has every potentials to improve the society because social worker has that determination. Social workers has that mind to evaluate people by dint of his ethics that every individual is individual every individual is should be evaluated by his own dignity so those social worker has all these things why social work is not in a remarkable position always when we are in tension when we are in crisis when we are in need of necessity of social work we are start thinking and talking about this like in bangladesh 50th decade social work teaching has been started till today the pro I, i'm not as i'm by being i'm the citizen of this country i honor this i'm graduate of social work i'm fighting for this so many professors are fighting for this but having experience from some parts of india and global experience from so many countries still those social worker in some countries are professionalized, but their working avenue is very, very narrow. It's not wide because of the mindset of the policymakers, mindset of the social worker themselves, because they don't love to take risk and responsibility. Social work is such a challenging profession that teaches us to be a good challenge taker. But after having teaching, when we are coming to the field, when we are getting job, actually, this is the question of my students, my some of our followers with some mental agony that social worker are being produced every year thousands and thousands but there is no job field specific especially for them there is no job category where social worker may be uh, 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 working together that is their mental depression and torture there are so many questions like that and hope uh, dr nikamil uh, uh, Kadambari and also Monosta, of course, uh, uh, will be aligned with my my uh, my ten tension. Really, uh, the problem, what's going on globally? Because uh, I could recall, I have some questions. All the platforms, uh, social work congress created by IFSW, IASSW, and I have a regular connection with them just to get some idea. I invited them to to visit Bangladesh and see the situation the prospects and challenges of social work i don't know what will be happening next time but my dream is till i'm alive i would like to see social work in a good position because social worker has such a potential that they can uh, come together and fill the gap where the gap is created by the policy makers by other people by other people's support it's very important because social worker has a holistic view that you you guys already mentioned you honorable people already mentioned that social worker has a comprehensive mind has a holistic mind has a theoretical framework and ideas has a practical ground but there is a gap between practice and theory actually that is my concern i'm a, a social work academician i'm doing job in a university private university in bangladesh but beside when i fail my students are facing crisis when i send them to uh, their field practice Actually, they are not being evaluated properly. They are just doing, going and coming back, but they don't know many things from the field like other countries where social work is professionalized and social work is developed. Then it clicked my mind that I should have a foundation. I should have a close connection with so many organizations so that where I can also share our experiences together uh, uh, through a reciprocal relation and I can send my students to have a good idea, good understanding from the field level and just now there are so many comments actually we are close to the end you will get two minutes last time to greet the uh, followers and friends to speak about it and before that just uh, let me read that comment that uh, our friend Ahmed uh, W. Hussain uh, from Egypt so far thanks to the generous initiative our respected dear professor from my point of view as a researcher and a social worker in the field of children at risk social difference one include first include precautionary measures for social workers and children in care institutions and this falls within the scope of the institution social protection policy to triggering 
the self and institutional supervision of following up care institutions for its institution strategy three uh, separately preventing visits to children uh, and the rest of the parts not clearly seen here and Bishwati Sharkar, our mother Bella Sharkar is very much enlightened and proud of this discussion, especially to Mona Sharkar. Thank you, Didi. Thank you. Anishkar, very good initiative. Congratulations. Nagaraju again written here and it on us once again. Thanks to Habib Rahman because arranging this uh, nice platform. Indrojit Ghosh wrote social workers will play a key role post COVID-19 in every respect to improve the livelihood of the people. We home and initiative in Kolkata are working with more than 200 NGO to reach out uh, the need, needy people. Very good, very good. And Jojit Ghosh, thanks to you. Salute you all together that you are really extending your kind hands to the needy people in such a, such a scenario where government is equally trying in a vast scale Anishkar, very professional presentation, excellent, congratulations. Shujan Banerjee again, one of our main goal is to greening the social work profession, getting recognizing of our profession can help us to make our society healthy and sustainable. Before coming to our dear and respected guest and speaker, I would like to again convey my gratitude to Almighty, thanks to all of you, and one assurance to all of you, if I, I, I am being alive a long term, long life, definitely by this platform, I will bring the whole world together. I will present you whole world social worker together by the grace of Almighty. This is my self-commitment because someone has to take initiative. Even if I have to sacrifice my own other careers, I don't care for that because social work is my passion. We have to come from, we have to hold hands together. We have to uh, uh, keep shoulder together so that social worker might be categorized properly. Social worker might be professionalized. So social worker might get practice from the society, get value and avenue to work together. So last question, there are so many actually uh, quotations are coming. So my greets to all of you. All the followers and friends, please be with us after this session and every session one day ahead, we will remind you and I mentioned you previous time that this is a global platform, the whole world will be connected soon. And one day gap, we will just entertain and invite our some families and some friends from social work background in Bangladesh, how they're uh, 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 keeping and staying their healthy time during this COVID-19 and where is the scope of social work intervention? So our platform is stay home, stay healthy during COVID. This is a community social work concern. Today's subtitle was community rebuilding process. Our three speakers wonderfully described from uh, 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 India, from Philippines and from Nepal. Thanks and salute to all of you, three of you. My last question is how we the social worker com can be more compassionate, can be more practical, can be more risk taker, can be, can be more social leader, can be an entrepreneur that you three mentioned simultaneously. Because an entrepreneur, first he or, or she has to be entrepreneur, then they can make somebody entrepreneur. So rather being entrepreneur self, how we can make our students, our followers, our community builders, entrepreneur to build a proper community. I'm coming to uh, Dr. Nikamil, actually, this is the last two minutes, Dr. Nikamil. So you have to greet even the audience today for a nice session that you entertain and spoke with them last few, I mean, two hours almost. Please. Yeah, uh, first, uh, thank you, Mr. Habi, for this wonderful uh, online uh, forum. Uh, to my fellow social workers from Nepal, Philippines, India, and Bangladesh. Uh, we need to stand shoulder to shoulder in this time of crisis. We need to promote group and personal efficacy. And we need to make sure or to inform the public or to care for each other and to advocate that no one will be left behind in this fight we need to be united in every battle. 
and we as a social worker have an important role. I have five <coughs> points in this discussion. First is we need to think out of, out of the box. We need to see that right. our profession will have a great contribution because I'm also a military officer, a military professor before uh, in different fields. Second is we need to invest in scientific research to improve our our social work knowledge, skills, and attitude, especially in addressing COVID-19. Third is we need to amplify social worker contribution in this time. Uh, we need to realize and we need to identify those social workers, our social workers, our colleagues in the front line serving the people. So now is the time to amplify our colleagues, not other profession, but our social worker, our social work profession. Fourthly is uh, we have a new normal. And in this new normal, we need to adapt. We are helping our clients to adapt to their conditions. But right now, we as a nation needs to adapt to this new normal. And lastly is uh, we have a saying in the Philippines that we are all in this together and we will get through in this together and no one will be left behind. So to our social workers, mabuhay po kayo and namaste. Thank you very much for your service to humanity in this time of crisis. Thank you. Very good discussion. Thank you, Dr. Nikamil. Uh, most probably you will get, oh, my son is here actually. <laughs> This is the family time is going on. I I just hello say hello to everybody. I locked the door. He was waiting last two hours for me and <laughs> last thing he entered this room just to say Quite hello. Natural. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually this situation most probably going on globally everywhere. Situation is same so far, I think. So mm -hmm. I would love to. I would love to come to uh, Mr. Manoj Shankar. Dada, could you please explain what COVID nineteen teaches us? Really, do we get any learning from this COVID nineteen in in our uh, uh, human life? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, before I get into your point, I would just like to say that uh, we should call the ourselves who are into this uh, uh, practice of social work. Uh, we should consider ourselves as development professionals. We are basically technical uh, uh, resource uh, persons. All those who are into the uh, into these fields, those who were uh, discussing with us uh, during this session. So I consider all of them as a professional person in the development sector. So that is first uh, of my comment. And so far as COVID-19 is concerned, it has uh, again helped, I mean, pushed us or it has uh, compelled uh, uh, us to learn, to be with the family, to be uh, um, uh, with, the, um, uh, with the, their um, family members and staying, uh, I mean, spending time with the family members, which was missing for, for the kind of uh, livelihood that we are uh, accustomed to. And also, there are issues which is, uh, this thing has uh, taught us is that to uh, keep ourselves away from junk foods, which we were accustomed to. Now that we are all habituated to home-based uh, food, uh, that is, uh, uh, which was there earlier before this, all these uh, fast food and junk foods were there. And that time health uh, situation was a uh, little better than uh, the kind of thing we are having because there are a lot of problems we are facing due to this kind of junk foods. So COVID-19 also has brought us uh, and uh, also created a situation where we can uh, strengthen the integrity among uh, the communities, integrating among uh, the uh, social, of, I mean, the <coughs> development professionals who are into the social profession, and also among integrity uh, and bondage between uh, the community, the social profession, and the government to bridge this uh, learning process, because there are a lot of things we have learned during this process of lockdown and all the things. So these things are to be noted down so that we can overcome the situation. And I strongly believe that through our collective effort, we will be able to overcome this situation. 
it is not any any not the job of the government not the job of the community but it's a collective effort that we we all have to make and so far as uh, we as development uh, workers are concerned we are the professional uh, service um, the professional uh, social workers are concerned we have uh, the to come up with ideas we'll have to come up with innovative models so that we can bring in convergence among the community within the community with the government and the system and strengthen the entire revival process of the community the uh, rebuilding thing right thank you well, uh, habibul yeah. bhai for uh, be, uh, i mean inviting me at this session and thank you all those who have put their comments and uh, it is uh, also a very great a great experience to my thoughts and thank you uh, the other two speakers kadam bidhi ji and nikmel and it is thank you so much for having your uh, uh, time with me thank you thank you monoj sir i am coming back to uh, miss say say everybody yeah miss uh, miss kadambari and before uh, richa choudhury wrote enlightening shakti prova again wrote god bless you sir and ame from philippines stay safe healthy to all of you and before coming to miss kadambari that the alo i mean the discussion that is going on what covid 19 teaches us and before that please don't forget to look into the matter how a social worker can be a challenge taker can be a great motivator without being self motivated how it's possible <laughs> really that should be our great concern yeah uh, uh the challenge the challenge of uh, to, uh, social workers to recognize as a profession uh, in nepal is also same as uh, you uh, the professor hab rahman just told so uh, i all, i echo with him and uh, recognizing that but how they we can see uh, the condition of uh, social workers not really in the front line as they should be in covid 19 response and this is where i think the recognizing them as a profession in this situation Uh, is um lacking so social workers are all comprehensive holistic and all they have all these things but somewhere i feel like since bangladesh you have a 15 decades uh, decades of uh, the courses um, starting of the course nepal is in 20s so i wonder there would be lots of uh, first second third generation social workers and i many times have felt that the graduate when they graduate from a, a university and they get into the practice probably they sometimes be occupied with their own practice when they work and they not really come to advocate for the recognition of social workers as a social work profession so this is my request to the um, earlier generation or cohort of uh, social work graduates to take this matter as one of their um important task uh so that the university or the educators like us who there to um the in this mission to do, make it uh, to have it recognized as a profession we can have a bigger community to raise our voice or make it very effective mission um so at the end i like to thank all the audience the uh, students i have seen a students uh, remarks also there and my colleagues like uh, kim anisha nagarazu and all for your very encouraging uh, questions and encouraging remarks so at the end uh, i like to say that uh, there is no absolute the things are changing we are in a changing situation and always we are we are a being that is uh, we are in the process of evolution so i feel like uh, this challenge will make it more better uh, human kind so look for the alternative for social work students look for the alternative if you wish to uh, find the ways how we we can work with the vulnerable people uh, the psychosocial pyramids give you a lot of uh, emergency responding this uh, pyramid give you a lot of ideas and uh, be organized uh, though we are stuck at home uh, don't just keep yourself uh, isolated uh, or away 
be in any medium of uh, interaction and the group uh, so that you feel connected, you feel organized. Uh, and here, the, the community may be a, a virtual, but it's forming. And it's very good to see a virtual community of social workers forming. Thank you. Very good, very good. We are very close to end. Within two or three minutes, we are just going to end. But I'm very happy and thankful, grateful to Almighty to let us be connected together due to this COVID-19 situation. And there are so actually huge network problem in different parts, even in our country. But we are digital country. It's true. We are getting this service. And before COVID-19, we never thought to hold like such a uh, scenario through Zoom app, Steam Word, and some, some other way, or, or webinar, seminar. But we are continuously doing that. We are taking classes, students, through Zoom app, Messenger, and actually internet and digitalization has given us this all these things as our friend Supi came actually asked to know about bangladesh situation even regarding elderly people actually bangladesh government and we are happy actually there is a elderly service scheme in bangladesh all elderly people getting service it might be comparatively minimum amount but every month they're getting support a listed elderly people getting support. There is uh, uh, not a huge expansion of elderly nursing nursing care home. There is in Dhaka, capital city, there is uh, Prabhin Hitoshi Shangho name, there is elderly uh, care home. And privately, uh, 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 nursing home, elderly nursing home is developing. It's coming up gradually. But professionalization or taking care of the elderly people is, is still far behind because, you know, Bangladesh is a uh, a rural prone, rural famous country, uh, rural people are living in rural areas. So uh, 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 even the uh, elderly people whose son and daughter are doing job, they are not loving to come to urban area to stay with them in such a congested uh, uh, livelihood, congested home, actually this way. But we are thinking so government is trying, government is putting attention to this and uh, some entrepreneurs, some uh, uh, philanthropist, volunteer, uh, rich people, they are thinking for establishing daycare center and daycare, I mean, nursing home for a better elderly care in future. I'm in the last part. Thank you. Sukhpi Kim, Nagarazu, Shakti Prabha, Richa Choudhury, Shujan Banerjee, all our friends together. Actually, so many friends are here from home and abroad. I initially mentioned uh, someone has to take initiative. I might be uh, the least someone here or because I love to be connected and I, I, I would like to convey my uh, advice and greetings to all the young generation social worker that be connected, be positive. Mm -hmm. Don't lose connections, try to make connections. Don't break connections because connections can give you many things. Connection is resource. Connection is social capital. Connection is your uh, uh, chances to be revitalization, to be potential globally locally it's very very important we are social worker we are versatile by nature we are supposed to be versatile though we are not likely but we are trying to do that really we are having comprehensive mind we have a broader scale of thinking we have a tremendous leadership in community level so i thought i actually i should uh, share my dream here in, in my previous uh, time, uh, I mean, when I was student of school level, I was supposed to be a, a, a doctor, physician. I dreamed to be a doctor because of serving my village people. When I failed to become a doctor, I got frustrated. I was about to commit suicide. This is true story of my life. But I just got back. I got enrolled in social work that I never dreamed to be a social worker. I was highly frustrated that subject like social work, should I be the student of that discipline? I, I don't like to be. But after, after passage of time, gradually, when I get involved, when I got the actions of social work discipline, when I got the uh, suggestion, ideas, versatility from my teachers, different areas, local and broader connections, foreign connections, I got action that social work is really a good subject. Social work is such a subject which can make a hook, uh, a, a hub of all relations. So social work has huge potential to stand beside the physician, 
because social worker role comes before the physician and after the physician it's very important so social work has many things to do i salute all of our friends please don't get lose heart just keep heart together keep hands together keep shoulder together social work must win social work definitely bring the sense of humanity getting teaching from covid 19 i'm delighted to have our honorable guest my friend dr nikamil from philippines i know you are very busy you you are technocrate there i dare to invite you really you spend more than 2 hours with us we are grateful again we might really call you because you are social worker and you have a responsive mind to the society so this is your responsibility to spend time for us after the government and very grateful to miss uh, pradeepta kadambri i know i knock you before but you are a very busy i know you are senator you are principal and above all these things you have so many activities for the community for the rural people and uh, and for the students so you spend to to our small we are very grateful and hope your relation with bangladeshi social work and global social worker will be not renewed because already you have that relation will be sustaining with a hard relation and last of all monos the monos the highly busy person he is he has a long profile he has so many project work i know i have some uh, close connection uh, i mean uh, a discussion with monos the but monos finally told me okay i will manage time to to join with you in that facebook group i will be delighted if i could share something with our uh, beloved fellow colleagues junior students actually uh, those dream to build social work strengthen and stronger we are just uh, their footprint we are just uh, bringing them uh, uh, front line to make them close i'm finishing and last comment kaji jaki has joined us uh, extremely good session for our present situation sir thank you kaji actually you are late we are going to close this by a minute by a second so thanks again to all of you last request and a uh, request please share this to your facebook please invite your friend to to join with us because uh, this is uh, such a platform which bring you together which might bring you might invite you together so please inbox me your profile your interest that you love to join us in next many sessions thanks a lot thank you everybody please watch us in community talks youtube channel and community talks bd facebook group thank you thanks a lot good luck everybody stay home stay healthy thank you